based out of Sydney, have a company called Angry Koala. We do business intelligence consulting, um, obviously available for hire. Um, and today I'm going to be talking to you about Power Pivot and um, a few, a uh, bit of a, a few stories about some of my travels and how that actually relates to Power Pivot, which is sort of interesting in itself. And um, but the, I guess the key takeaway, I guess, in this, what I'm hoping you guys take away is, is just using, uh, showing you real examples, different customers, different ways of doing things. Just give you some ideas about how you can go about using Power Pivot. All right. Well, I breathe heavily, apparently. Exciting start. Huh. Um, I actually rode one of those. Uh, who, any motorbike riders here? Whoo! All right. You're going to have a good session. Um, 190 horsepower. Okay, I had an old Datsun 240Z. Anyone know what they were? I think it was about 120 horsepower. <laughs> so this is a bike, weighs nothing, 190 horsepower. It was insane to ride. It was just absolutely insane. And it was that power, what it gave us was this feeling of freedom. What it gave me is this amazing feeling of freedom. In the end, I'll talk about what I actually bought, which wasn't that. Um, but, and the reason I could ride it and ride it quite quickly is there's all this electronics inside of it. If the wheel starts came off the ground, it'll cut it back. If you're in a corner and you gun the, the heck out of it, it goes, ah, 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 too much lean, not going to do it. So it's got all those things. So there's all this electronics inside. And it's exactly what we have in Power Pivot. Okay, it's an add-in to Excel, phenomenally powerful, phenomenally powerful. And because things happen so quickly, we get that same feeling of freedom. So uh, it's a very, very cool uh, environment as that is a cool motorbike. Uh, that's what I got in the end. It's a, a Multistrada. Um, it's only got 160 horsepower and um, Unfortunately, it only gets to 100 kilos an hour in 2.8 seconds, so you know, it's a bit of a slouch compared to that other thing. Um, but what you can do is you can go off-road because it's got electronics that jack it up, adjust the suspension and everything. In fact, I rode up from Sydney over three days to get here and of course got caught in that lovely thunderstorm, thank you very much, and uh, got hailed on on the whole bit. So that's pretty exciting. So what, uh, just before I cover what we're going to cover, you would have noticed, if you're observant, that I did this a moment ago. Um, I'm not a tweeter. Maybe I should be a tweeter. There seems to be a few tweeters around. Um, who here go? Did anyone here go to Adam's session? Adam Coggan's session on TFS? A couple of you. Okay. So he again started. Th you thought he'd do this uh, tweeting thing. So I've started doing some tweeting. I'll be tweeting during our session um, because it's the best way to start tweeting, isn't it? So in front of a, a large audience. And so I'll be doing that. And the reason I'm going to do that is that right at the end of the session, I'm going to bring up an application called um, Analytics for Twitter. It's something you can download from the internet. Uh, it's Power Pivot, and it'll actually go off to Twitter and suck in information and um, give us statistics on that information using Power Pivot, strangely enough. So your job is to tweet. Um, these are the key things, TechEd, Power Pivot, DAT303, that's this session, and if you say nice things about it, things like, I don't know, amazing or awesome or best or any of those things, there's some other terms here but you don't need to know about those. <laughs> um, and we'll see how we go, alright? So let's get this started. Um, 
No, I think I've already put that in, so we're good to go. Good as gold, as they say. So, we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about navigation, visualization, and showing the right metrics. Just those three things. I'm going to show you two million different ways. Um, this is something I did for uh, Microsoft uh, Australia quite a few years ago. So it's actually based on traditional analysis services, but we can do exactly the same thing with Power Pivot. Um, and you know, some big fan of uh, spark lines of visualizations, things like that. And we'll talk about how you might go and do that in Power Pivot. Um, for those that don't know where Australia is, um, and you want to explain to your overseas friends, this is where it is. Top of the world. And so I mentioned uh, we're going to cover some stories. So here's the story. Um, I jumped with my folks, with my folks, <laughs> that would have been terrible. No, <laughs> I hope they don't listen to this, I suppose they might, um, with the family. And we jumped in and did a, our grand tour. And that's where we went. Uh, so we grabbed, oh great, grabbed a cabavan, camper van and off we went. Um, interestingly, when you go off on some of these trips, there are actually sometimes kangaroos just lying beside the road. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, there were some koalas, not terribly angry, although I guess I could have thrown something at them or something to get them more excited, but they are sort of lazing around. Uh, some fairly straightforward roads, uh, not really challenging even out towards Lake Eyre. Um, eventually, we were running out of tracks altogether uh, till at one point there was nothing at all. That was on the way up to uh, Lake Eyre North. Uh, we crossed some uh, creek crossings and creek crossings with water. That part was actually easy, it was nice and firm, but trying to get out was a bit of a struggle, so it was a little challenge there. Now further upstream, oh sorry, this was a uh, slight problem. We had four punctures in three tyres, so it was a bit of a challenge getting out of that one. So, we got to the top end here, and this is a, a, a weir, and what you've got here, a fish. Now these fish, are piling themselves up, trying to get up river. It's only about this deep, and they're trying to wake their way up. Now, what we did for our users is created a fish ladder for our users. Now, isn't that the most fantastic fish ladder? There was about five fish in there. They're piling themselves up like crazy, trying to get up there, and there's about five fish. And the reason is, the front of that thing, unfortunately the photo didn't show it, is the same width. Okay, so really we want to help our users. We want to give them lots of room to find their way to their data, in this case upstream. Luckily we were there, so we grabbed our uh, fish, I mean users, and um, we picked them up and we put them up speed. So we were very helpful. It was a great lesson. And we got down to the river and of course our users grow up, so we slice them. <laughs> Slices. The kids said, Sorry, my user said, that's fantastic. Dad, you should give out some koalas. Because they love my koalas. You take that one, yeah, that, down the front's good value. All right, navigation. Now hang on, I'm just thinking, did I have anything to say about that? I think, is this one? Yeah, that's it. It is going to interrupt our session just slightly. Oh, that. <laughs> Let me just try that again. Copy. Not there, thank you. Just there. Oh, good. You see how professional I am with uh, TweetDeck. I'm giving up. <laughs> I might have to have somebody help me in a moment. <laughs> so you know what this means, doesn't it? If you receive a koala, you have to tweet something. All right. Also, if you receive a koala, and there's many of you that will, you have to do a thing at the end, that evaluation, and um, you know the words to use, right? Okay, let's see some real stuff. All right. Anyone here from New South Wales? All right, so about a, th a third, something like that. All right, well, let's find out a little bit about you guys before we launch into this. Um, who here is using Power Pivot already? 
Okay, out of those people, who's used it with a client, where the, actually the client's actually using it? A few, excellent, awesome. All right, um, who's used Excel pivot tables? All right, excellent. Well, you're a long way ahead in terms of Power Pivot because you use Power Pivots to look at, sorry, use Pivot Tables to look at Power Pivot and this performance point and, and blah, blah, blah. Um, very good. Who uses Excel? All right, see? <laughs> awesome. I should, yeah. Okay, so this is Excel. Um, this is the add-in. The add-in is Power Pivot. How much is Power Pivot? Free. Free, all right. Millions and millions of rows, it's free, sorry? Ah, yes, we will get to that. I'll get to that now. Why is it free? It's free because you can do all these great things, but it's just Excel. So if you want to share it to lots of people, you really you need to push it into SharePoint. And I'll talk a little bit about how that works later. But just to put in context of what we're talking about, it's just the Power Pivot side. I'm not going into the, the Power, into the SharePoint side of things uh, for this session. So you get... When you download and install Power Pivot, you get a, a new ribbon, an add-in ribbon, and the one on the left here says Power Pivot window. When you biff on that, it brings up Power Pivot. And if you think about Power Pivot as here's, here's Excel, and then Power Pivot is sort of underneath it, when you flick between these things, if I click on the Excel tab, all it's doing is going, jumping back into Excel, back into Power Pivot. All right, pretty straightforward. Now this data is New South Wales uh, data on crime. It's publicly available, so you guys can download this and do exactly the same thing. And it includes the local government area, the category and subcategory of what the bad things they did, and how many bad things happened in that particular local government area for that particular month and that year. All right. The way you get the data into here is you say, I want to get it from SQL Server, uh, from an access database or whatever. Um, effectively, yeah. Oh, good. Not even set up. Um, basically, when you go to the next step, you'll get a list of tables. You tick what you want to see. If you want to, you can get the details. You can filter it, and away you go. All right. And then you get the data in. It drops straight into here. At the moment, we've got one table. Fairly straightforward. Uh, that's all I was going to show you at this point. So you've got some data. Uh, back into here. So we go into the Power Pivot ribbon, and we click on uh, Create a Pivot Table. Go do it on the existing worksheet, and there we go. All right, so basically I've got a count here, so that's the number of bad things that happen. Let me format that a bit better. Uh, we want Pivot Table, Field Settings, Number Format, Number. Okay, so now it looks a little nicer. All right, so obviously I can list the local government areas that, and uh, we could sort those. Actually, you can only sort it using that, I guess. Into there, and sort Z to A. Sydney, all right. He's from Sydney, Blacktown, interesting. Okay, we'll see just what those are in a moment. And before we do that, um, I can, here's one of your tips. If you hold your control key down and you drag across this sheet, it creates a copy of that. So I've now got two copies of the same thing. So this one now, what I can do is I can say, instead of local government area, maybe I put the categories of crime. So I've now got two different sheets here, sheet one and sheet two, with, with information from the same Power Pivot cube underneath. Now, the neat thing though is we've also got this concept of um, slices. So if I put on the vertical slice, the local government area, and then in the horizontal, the category and subcategory. And this is actually sorted now by the number of times these bad things have happened. So if I click on, uh, I don't know, arson. Okay, don't live in Campbelltown. If you want to get burnt down, assault. Sydney in that town, yeah, black town, just not a really good place, is it? Um, Okay. Anyway, it goes on. So basically these slices are now affecting what's going on here. Now this slice, it's got its own ribbon. So under the slicer ribbon here, you can see that I've got a, um, the options. I can change the look and feel, the number of columns, things like that. But um, the important part here is this guy, Pivot Table Connections. Okay. At the moment, I've, I, I've, it's connected to this Pivot Table. If I tick the second one, Pivot Table 2, and click OK, 
So now if I click on um, arson, for instance, you'll see that on here, this is Campbelltown arson there. If we go to that other sheet, you'll notice now it just says arson because it's actually filtered that one as well. All right? This is a very important concept. All right? that you use the slices and you glue these uh, pivot tables together. It's how we build up uh, entire uh, workbooks, if you like, of information. And we'll, we'll cover that to a greater extent later. Obviously, I've got the year as well, so I can see how things are going over time by putting it out on columns, which is great. Did I say that's a relatively new product? Let's try that again. Goodness knows where the other one's gone. Yeah, great. Why didn't that happen the first time? Okay, so slices. Any questions? Fantastic. Must be perfect. All right. Let's get back. Sorry? Use, oh, for the, when you're taking the data out? Absolutely. And in fact, as, as SQL professionals, as a lot of us are, um, yeah, just create a view and um, hide a lot of the complexities from the users when you bring it in. Oh, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about later about positioning and where I find where Power Pivot fits in and things like that into the uh, BI stack. Okay, we continue our journey. Um, we saw some wonderful rock formations. Anyone know what they're called? The Twelve Apostles. So that was on the Great Ocean Road. Kid said, ah, oh, sorry, the user said, that's fantastic. Uh, Dad. So, top 12. Are you ready? All right, let's see if this works. Um, 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 what, uh, come on, it's got to work this time. All right, if I can find the right sheet. Jeez oh, Louise. Okay, top 10 is over, top 12 is in. Copy. Go into this crazy new tool. Click in there. Paste. Hey. All right. At least we'll have three tweets, tweets at the end of the session. All right. So we're doing top 12. My session's going to be so much longer now. Okay. And again, he's gone to the wrong freaking place. Uh, one of these really exciting sheets is the one I want. Good. We're back there. All right. So if I right click on here, there's a couple of things you do. One is uh, you saw how I sorted. Not only can you sort A to Z, but you can sort by any of the columns there. So I'm going to sort by the sum of count. I should already sorted that way. All right. But also you can restrict what goes there and you go filter top 10, but we all know that's old. It's top 12. So top 12. So now we've got the top 12 things happening here. All right. And it means that if I want to look at abduction and kidnapping, then I get the top 12 of that, etc. Okay, so it's a fantastic way for you uh, to help your users find information. Um, the other thing we can do to help our users uh, show what's happening in the data is we can do conditional formatting. Uh, what I tend to use is this guy here. You apply that to everything at that level, which is that guy. And so now you get conditional formatting over um, the, those particular numbers, so you can see, you know, where the hot points are. So 2001 is not looking good for these guys. So, I don't know whether it has the um, riots and things in there. Probably does. Um, okay, I think that's it for that. Okay, the slicer gallery. I actually set that up. So what you tend to do is those slices you can copy and paste. So I can paste that onto a front uh, sheet and then have other pivot tables hooked up to those particular sheets, yeah? So I have a slicer and then sheets hooked up to those. So that was that. Um, I showed you how you link those in and we all know it's top 12. We continued on our journey. Has anyone been to Andamuka? Right, it's way out um, near Roxby Downs. A very interesting cemetery. For those of you up the back, that says um, Biggest Dickus, and um, 
He said, Trevor John Dixon seemed to be very proud of his... Yes, all right. Um, I think big, sometimes things can be too big, all right? So, we've got this concept of sparklines. I love sparklines. The girls loved it too. My user said, that's fantastic. Give out more koalas. Everyone cover your eyes and go kill somebody at some stage. <laughs> All right. Hey, okay. Let's add some spark lines. All right, so now I've got a section there. I've conveniently put time across the top here, so what I can do is I click on this cell here, I go insert spark line, which is that one, and it says, where's the data that you want to use? And I go from there to there. Okay, click OK. And I've got a spark line. That's a bit, that's a bit more like how I like a, a spark line to look. And I can copy that down through that section. All right, we've now got spark lines showing arson over time. If we show everything over time, we can look at you know, all these particular areas and whether pat particular uh, suburbs are getting peaks or troughs. The reason I like um, sparklines is that, I don't know about you guys, but when I find my users, they usually say, I want to see what it is, the number is right now, this month, today, whatever it happens to be. And then the other thing they try to find out is, is the trend. You know, are we going up, are we going down? And you don't need a huge graph to do that, right? You just need a sparkline. So use sparklines, they're very useful. And I've shown you conditional formatting, so that's all good. And, of course, there's a tweet for that, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, it's a coloured one, isn't it? Na, 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 na. Someone tell me stop, for heaven's sake. Is that it? Keep going, thank you. No, that's not it. That's not it. It must be that one. There it is. <laughs> so... So did you know I, I'm a magician, so I can take that and I can grab, and just throw it in the audience and it goes, right? And this is like the same thing. It's just like, what the hell? I'll use the old technique. There you go, and that'll work. Yeah, look at that, straight to it. Okay, big is not always great. Excellent. Copy that. Do this one. Much bit. Oh, look at that. Stick with your old ways. Okay, awesome. Okay, now I think I've completely lost track of what's going on. <laughs> I'm doing spark lines. We've done spark lines. I'm happy with that. You guys should be happy with that. That's the sort of thing we're doing. You notice the slices, by the way, in here, there's a slightly different look and feel now. Um, I'm a bit conscious there's guys standing up the back. Um, feel free to sit down. I, I won't mind if you get up and leave. I know it's the last session of the day. I won't be offended, <laughs> truly, as long as you tweet something nice. Um, so we looked at spark lines, top 12 conditional formatting, we've seen all of those. All right, now the fun really begins. ATM transactions, demo. It says demo, so let's demo. Uh, okay, so let's open up the old spreadsheet, which is that one. Go into there, close it all together. Yes, I don't want to save it. Go back into there, bring up this. Now, a bit of background. Um, this is a, a client of mine. They own more than half of the ATMs in Australia. And the Victorian government said, we're a bit concerned that people are spending a lot of money in uh, gambling establishments and going back to ATMs a lot. And so we'd like to know how often they're going back and how much they're spending per day at a particular ATM. So, your first tip is when you ask your users to give you some data, I said to them, can I have it in a fixed format flat file, please? Why did I do that? Anyone? Anyone? There's a koala in it. There's a koala in it. Why did I do that? Get the same sort of data for everyone? Uh, no, but you have a koala anyway. Um, no, the reason is, back in the years ago, um, it was much faster to load in flat files because you don't have to scan ahead looking for commas or uh, tabs. Um, unfortunately, PowerPivot 
doesn't do fixed format. It only does tab or comma. So if you ask users for data, do tab, delimited, or comma, delimited, all right? So that was my first mistake. So I got all the data. When I brought it into the system, I did distinct counts and things like that. But it was taking about eight seconds to come back and give me information. I thought, well, this is, this is crazy. So I brought it into SQL, did a big group by, and then brought it back into our Power Pivot. And this is what we came up with. Guess I could have said that while it was preparing it. <laughs> Anyone know any good jokes? No? Okay. Um, at least what I'm showing you, there's no smoke and mirrors here. Um, this is, every time I'm opening one of these spreadsheets, it is loading that data in. Actually, what it's doing is restoring the analysis services in memory queue back into, into here, into memory. And what we have here is the number of transactions per day. This is sort of interesting, the fact that the zoom doesn't work. Um, that's how many rows are in here. 24 million rows in Excel. Not too shabby. So how does it perform? Oh, look at that. Just like there's a few thousand rows. All right, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm, now, I'm now grouping by number of withdrawals. So that means this is how many times somebody goes back to the same, same transaction per day. How many times do you think somebody went to the same machine on the same day? Oh, what was yours? Six. Oh. <laughs> Six and ten. All right, let's have a look. Now, I wonder how long it's going to take to sort 26 million rows, uh, 24 million rows. See, I'm exaggerating already. Uh, sort largest to smallest. Oh, shit, it's already not. Um, 27. All right, this guy went to the same machine 27 times, and he took out $840. What a winner. Two dollars per transaction. I don't think he's thinking clearly anyway, right? <laughs> so it's probably not that big an issue. All right. We can do this for how much people take out. There's more koalas. There's more koalas. How much did somebody take out? 20 grand. Who said that? All right. You have two koalas. $15,000. Did anybody here know, besides this gentleman, that you could take that much money out of an ATM? I didn't know that. $1, it's a, well, some machines have a $1,000 limit, but you can go back as many times as you want. I can show you which machines. <laughs> <laughs> then I'd have to kill you. <laughs> All right. So it's pretty straightforward information. Now, what the, the guys wanted to know is they wanted to know in terms of bands, you know, how much, people are peop how much money are people taking out, you know? And so what I did, I created a little DAX calculation here called amount band, and it's very straightforward. All it says is if the, the amount of money is greater than 1,000, make it 1,000, otherwise do a floor calculation based on $200. So basically it's bucketing into $200 lots and over 1,000 is greater than that. So it's just doing that, and that's what this is doing here. So you wind up with some bands, 0, 200, 400, and 1,000 or greater. Make sense? So that's pretty well all we did there. You'll notice there are some other tables here. We've got the ATMs themselves, information about the ATMs, and some dates so we can roll up the dates from dates to years and things like that. Obviously, now we've got multiple tables. You need relationships, and the way you do that is in the design here. You create a relationship. We've already done that, so we're going to manage relationships, and you see there's a couple here. If I edit those, pretty straightforward. This table and this column is linked to this table and that column. All right. Um, you can only link on one column. If you've got more than one key where you have to link it, how do you do that? Sorry? Go to SQL. Go to SQL. Uh, yeah, all right. You can have a koala. Um, <laughs> uh, what a, you can, sorry? You can add dynamic. Add dynamic. You can add... So the point I'm trying to make, and not making it very well, is you can only have a single column in the relationship. So if you've got things where there's multiple columns, what you have to do is you have to concatenate them together. Okay? So there is a workaround. All right. So what's this look like for real? Let's just go back into Excel. And let's have a look. OK. So one of the things, how many people here build traditional analysis services cubes? Excellent. So about a 40% of the audience. Well, actually, about 42%, I think. Um, and what you'll, what sh the thing that I found about PowerPivot is it's, it's that the fact that it doesn't care whether something is a measure 
or something is an attribute and slicing it or a member. And at the moment, you've got the number of withdrawals here. I can put the number of withdrawals in here and it'll sum it. Okay, that's no problem. But I can just as easily put it as a slicer. So if I put it in the vertical slices here, there they are. You know our friend? Oh, there he is. Ha <laughs> ha! Hotel with gaming. <laughs> what a surprise. In fact, you can do multiple selections just by clicking and dragging your mouse. And in fact, all of these guys that are taking lots of stuff, going back lots of times, are hotel with gaming or club with gaming. Hotel without gaming. Hmm. I think they got a special room out the back. <laughs> what do you reckon? Anyway, so again, I used to use condition. Well, oh great, let's connect remotely to something I don't want to. Um, basically, conditional format again. You've got the financial institutions uh, take out an unusually high amount of money uh, compared to the rest, so that shows up there. Uh, this is sort of interesting. Um, I don't know whether the... Is, is one of my clients, is this client in the audience? No, but he might have been. Um, I <laughs> he'd seen the demo, and my next comment is, I never use this graph, okay? It's just to impress my clients, <laughs> okay? I don't find them incredibly useful, but it's really cool. I can click on different um, types of organizations and you see quite a different spread. And what that is, that's those bands over time and then looking at weeks. Uh, the big hole in the middle there, by the way, is Christmas. Uh, look, we've even got gentlemen's clubs. How awesome is that? Um, let's learn a bit more about that. Okay, what we've got here is when you go into the power pivot here and we created a pivot table, you've got another option which is create four charts. When you create four charts, four, four charts, what it does under the covers is create some other pivot tables. And what happens is when you do the slices, I've shown you how you hook those up to different pivot tables. When you click on the slicer, it updates the data in the pivot tables and then the charts are pointing at the pivot tables back on the sheet where your slices are. So from a user point of view, they click on the slice and the chart changes. So this is how you can create a complete board report um, for your users. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do club without gaming and we're going to grab the gentleman's club and we're going to compare them. Now, this technique of comparing things I use all the time. All it, like, um, you know, I want to compare this shop to this shop. I want to compare this product to this product, or these three products. And the way you do it is pretty straightforward. You just put that information into the columns, and then you let the money choose one, two, or three columns. All right? And then in the graph, you've now got three things to compare. Because, of course, if they select everything, then you've got to get a lot of lines, and it's just confusing. So I've selected three things here. You'll see that um, this is the spread of, of uh, dollars, and you can see the financial, uh, sorry, the, the uh, club without gaming has got the higher number of lower transactions. If we have a look at how many withdrawals are made out of each one, we've got the uh, clubs with gaming getting around 300, 150 for those, and about 50 for gentlemen's clubs. And how much do they take out? Well, sort of really the reverse. Club without gaming, about 120. Uh, what's that? 150. And 250 at the gentlemen's club, which would lead me to believe it's around $200 for a cigar. <laughs> All right. Pretty cool, though. Um, by the way, this is the uh, transaction, uh, sorry, the ATM information was actually in Excel, and I pushed that back through to Power Pivot as well. I'll show you how you do that later. I think that was all I was going to cover for that. Pretty cool though, eh? Um, they actually tried to do that themselves, uh, which they managed to do with a lot of worksheets and a lot of time. And of course, using Power Pivot, we can just do it you know, pretty effort effortlessly. So it's pretty cool. So we saw all the goodness. So it showed you spark lines, the banding was there, so there was a calculation in DAX, uh, conditional formatting, um, and using multiple charts and how you hook those things together. Just sort of cool. Age payments. I forgot to warn you, I've got lots of demos. I'm sorry about that. That was a joke. All right. Um, of course, I've got to find them. I keep going back to that, don't I? There you go. All right, uh, age payments. So what I did here is I created my own data. So I've got a series of bands because what I want to do is, this is age payments. This is when 
uh, how, who owes us money and for how long, yeah? And so basically I've created some bands for doing this. And the first thing we have to do is, if I want to get this into Power Pivot, I need to first of all turn this into a table. So we go into the home and we say conditional formatting. No, we don't. We say format as table. Uh, pick a warm color. No, hang on. Let me just do this again. Uh, format as table. I usually pick warm colors on the basis that the Power Pivot is green. And sometimes you get confused whether you're in Power Pivot or in Excel. So pick a warm color. All right, the next thing is important, <laughs> although someone kept correcting me that it wasn't very important, but I thought it was, um, is to name it. So I'm going to say T for table and bands grant. All right, so it's got a lovely name now. And so when you go into Power Pivot into the uh, ribbon, you click on Create Link Table. So that now pushes that data back into Power Pivot itself. Now, if I update the data in Excel and click Update, it'll push that data back into there. So it's like a pretty cheap and cheerful way to do some budgeting, maybe, and things like that. Or, even better, when the users say, I want to create this other sort of grouping, you go, okay, well, just throw the products in there, create your own names for the, the groups you want, and then push it back into the model, and away you go. Okay, very powerful. So this is now in Power Pivot. Um, so I'd create a relationship. Uh, I've actually already done it for the banding here, I think. Days late band. I've already created the relationship uh, design, existing relationships. Oops, close. So I basically set up the relationship to the band. Which is band uh, based on the key that I set up. Now the key itself, of course, I had to do a calculation for in the payments. All right, so it's a, at the moment, there's probably better ways to do it, but at the moment it's just a big case statement saying, you know, if it's greater than 30 days, one, if it's greater than 62, things like that. So it's just the same calculation, so I can link that in. Um, I've got another calculation here, which says how many days late this is, and it's just subtracting the dates from each other. All right. So DAX, in a lot of cases, is just SQL, uh, it's just SQL, <laughs> just Excel functions. All right. Now, there's some magic, though. The magic happens here. Um, I have a date dimension. That date dimension is disconnected from any data. Normally, you'd connect it to invoice date or whatever it happens to be. It's not actually connected to anything. It's just floating in space which means that when I go back into Excel in here and look at the receivables, there's a um, calculation in here. So the way you create these calculations, by the way, so I showed you DAX calculations in, back in Power Pivot, right? That's bottom-up calculations. Really powerful. Users understand it very easy. Put the calculation in, rolls it up. If I've got cost and I've got uh, sales, I can subtract them, get profit, roll it up, everything's cool. All right. In this case, this is top down, like traditional analysis services. And so, if I, and the way you get to it is you go into the uh, power pivot here and you go uh, new measure. All right. And away you go. You create the measure, put in the uh, DAX expression. We've already done that. So, let's have a quick look at what's going on. So, what this is saying is it's saying, Calculate the sum of all the paid amount in the payments table. So that's everything people have paid. But only return the rows out of the payments table where the invoice date is less than the, sorry, the invoice date is less than the closing date key and the payment date key is greater than the closing date key. So what's that mean? It means that I invoice them here and they paid just here. The, slicer that I'm going on the date is something in between. So I'd say, well, here's the date I'm looking at. Just give me anything that falls either side. It's a very powerful concept because you can use that for projects. This is when a project started. This is when it stopped. So at any point in time, I can see how many projects I've got underway. All right. So in this case, um, it's going to give me all the add up the sum of what's owed. And so what you get, therefore, is this where You've now got age payments over time, 
this is obviously, this company's had a lot of trouble, over 180 days for a lot of these things and quite a lot of money. And um, basically you could then look at, you know, particular areas or particular companies, whatever it happens to be, and see how they've gone over time. Okay, any questions? The question is, can you change the axis, do you say? Hold the axis the same across different slices. The scale. Uh, I think that's just a normal Excel thing. I think, yes. I don't know. Call from the audience. What's the, who says yes? Who says no? Yes. <laughs> Someone could tweet that. Even I learn things, it's great. No, I'm giving up on that. It was very short-lived, wasn't it? No, we might have a look at the end and see how we go. Um, okay. So I looked at point-in-time reporting and we looked at banding. We continue on our journey. Excellent. Where are we off to now? All right, middle of nowhere. There's more koalas. What is that? Sorry? Who said wasp nest? Awesome. You're wrong. Bird's nest. What sort? Swallows. Who said swallows? It's upside down. All right. We've got the full gamut. You guys are clever. All right. It was upside down. Things are not always as they seem. All right. That was the point of that. Whew. Um, the other point of this is something completely irrelevant, but I'm going to add it. Um, the reason we went all the way to there, that was Woomera by the way, was that um, there was a geocache in that pile of rocks there. All right, who knows about geocaching? Wow, okay, that's a, that's a lot of you. Geocaching is people hide a box and they give you the GPS coordinates, you go and you find it and you pull it out and you, you grab something out and you put something back in and you say, I found it. And it's sort of fun for me. <laughs> Lisa, Zoe, Megan and Sue, just, they're not as keen. It was great. Awesome. Ha! They were happy. <laughs> they said, throw out more koalas. Ah, whoa! That was a bit low, a low blow. Oh, oh, I got too many of these things. All right. So, we're talking about right metrics. Hang on. Let's do this. This will be fun. This will be fun, won't it? Okay, amazing how many, under a pile of rocks, yeah, okay. Not that rocks has a special meaning in this context, of course. <laughs> Feel free to uh, tweet yourselves. <laughs> right metrics, that's that one. Okay, another real client, um, in this case, um, some of the groupings, we wanted to make, simplify it, so we created our own banding. Remember how we can push our own banding in, back underneath, underneath? So the model categories were a bit too detailed, so we created some higher level groupings, and that's what we've used in here. And so now what we see is these charts, and let me hide that, and we'll look at, oh, I've already done that, I die clever. Okay, so I'm looking at medical, uh, instruments, PCs and monitors and services. So this is the same data in each case, but you'll notice that the graphs are completely, the charts are completely different. All right, so this is just the total number of dollars. This is the average per thing, per asset. You notice medical equipment is going through the roof in terms of average price. Our services are on the way out. I guess that's not so good for Angry Koala. Um, and PCs and monitors seem to have flatlined down the bottom. What about the percent share? So this is how much, by the way, this is using that point in time again. What they want to know is how much have we got under management at any point in time? So again, rent start date, rent end date, and we're looking somewhere in between. Okay, this is the percent share of the portfolio. Again, PCs and monitors is actually very high in that case. And this is the relative dollars to each other. So over time, what's going on? You see, services really has flatlined there. Okay, any questions? Um, and of course, it's all hooked in. So if you wanted to look at everything there, it's all sliced and hanging together. Of course, it's got to read it 
from the database first. Okay, any questions on that? So, show the right data. Okay, how do you clean up your data? Um, it's a good segue, so I, I, it's a good thing to plant. Um, you call Angry Koala. <laughs> and I have a raft of people that are very good at cleaning data. Um, in all seriousness, um, I should be the most um, challenged person with Power Pivot in that environment, all right? And the reason is I know MDX. There's, uh, how many people here know MDX and, and use it? Okay. We've probably got most of the people in Australia in this room. <laughs> and you think I'm joking. <laughs> I'm probably half not. There aren't that many people that uh, uh, that conversant in MDX and that whole stack. Um, the reason I personally am not challenged in this environment is exactly what you brought up about how do you clean the data. Um, Power Pivot works fantastic for my clients because I organise the data, I do dimensional modelling, I get everything organised. You know, I have star schemas and all the rest of it. All right? Just recently, as in the last project, I started not naming things DIM and fact tables anymore for the first time. I'm still in two minds whether I want to do that or not. So who, who does still do DIM and fact table naming? Okay, and who's gone to natural naming? Okay, and who's asleep because it's the last session of the day? Yeah. <laughs> 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 ah, you can't be, you put your hand up. <laughs> um, yeah, so at the end of the day, I don't know, you, you can go either way. Uh, the trouble is if you leave things as facts and, dim oh, sorry, coming back a bit. So basically we get all the data together, create a nice data mart, and there's my beautiful data mart, it's all clean and ready to go. And then I use traditional analysis services, and I still do that but then I'll use Power Pivot as well. The Power Pivot only goes to a few people. It doesn't go to everybody, all right? But, you know, the Power users, they're going to use it because they're going to create their own groups, their own stuff, and the way they go. If you have SharePoint, that publishes into SharePoint and the way you go. So just describing the SharePoint part of things, when you publish into a report library, which is very cool because now I've got control over the Excel spreadsheets, which are all over the place, all right? So it's now in the report library. As it hits it, um, SharePoint goes, whoa, I got one of these. It goes in and grabs the analysis services database. It's a backup. Who knows that if you put an extension .zip on the end of an Excel spreadsheet, you can have a look inside. Yeah? Cool. Okay, it's just a zip file. If you open up and have a look inside, there'll be a backup for analysis services. It grabs that and puts it on the server. Now, it's an analysis services server, but it's different to a traditional analysis services server. You have to have two different instances. So the, there's still a discussion. I'm on a, a mailing group like SSS Insi S -S -A -S Insiders, and it's got the dev team and people like that. And the, even yesterday, there's conversation. So what should we call this? You know, <laughs> because we've got really two flavors now of analysis services. There's Power Pivot with a VertiPack engine, which is BISM or tabular uh, environment. And then you've got analysis services and the UDM, which is the tr what I'd call the traditional. So we've got these two things. From my point of view, it's not really a big deal because it's the, the data is sitting just here. So I point Power Pivot at the data or I point analysis services at it. And in fact, what I do is I use Power Pivot to prototype what's going on with my users. Is this what you mean? Oh, look, I put these things together and you said there was a, a phone number in there and it was a postcode or vice versa, whatever it happens to be. A question. The question is, do you argue you have to have a data warehouse um, exercise in order to be successful with Power Pivot? is the question. The answer is no. Um, I think you'll do a, a hell of a lot better if you've got your data organised. But literally, if you for a start, we don't like calling it data warehouses because it's scary. <laughs> so they're analytic platforms. You like to inspire fear? In that case, data warehouse. <laughs> All the way. Um, look, it's, it's a mixture. Uh, there'll be people who will be use it for both. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's people in organisations and they are the people, they already do this in Excel anyway. So you're just giving them a better tool to do some of that. And also, some of them, it's almost like they're prototyping for you and it can push the stuff through for you and then you take the best of that and, and put it back in. All right, let's move on. Um, so... What I was trying to do then was uh, talk about the positioning of Power Pivot and where it sits in the BI stack. Are people comfortable, at least with, with where I, I sort of feel that, that fits? By the way, personally, 
I've got with Angry Koala, I have a challenge. Either my clients are small, and now they have to pay for things to, because they really need SharePoint in order to deliver this thing, or I'm dealing with large companies like big banks and things. They already have SharePoint, but it's like three versions old, and if you want to talk about SharePoint, you have to talk to those guys over there, and so it's sort of, I'm, I'm caught in, in both situations. Luckily, we've got clients which are medium, and they're actually taking on SharePoint, so, so in that respect, it's not so bad, but it's all new. You know, we, we're learning as we go. Uh, so we talked about the right metrics. That's all good. Point in time, we did the banding. All good. All right. More demos. Excellent. All right. So we won uh, a job with Rebel Sport, which is sort of ironic because I've been demoing for a few years now. Some of you might have seen me before. And I showed you AdventureWorks lots of times. I'm not showing you AdventureWorks at all. Unfortunately, I'm working for a company that does sell bikes <laughs> and sporting goods. And I thought, what the hell? Anyway, the good thing about this is it is real data. Um, and it's from Rebel Sport. They've got 130 um, stores. Uh, and there's quite a bit of data here. I'll show you how much. Uh, this is the sales header, sales items. Oh, hang on. There's only a million. Ah, okay. I'm going to show you another demo in a minute, <laughs> which has a little more than that. Anyway, the point of this particular demo is this is one of the reasons we got the job. Okay? They gave me some data. I said, can I have some data, please? They said, yes. And they gave me a month's worth of data, or two months or something. I just brought it straight into here. But the other thing I did was I enhanced it. And the way I enhanced it was I had with me something that rolls up postcodes to regions and regions to whether it's country, metro, New South Wales, etc. Um, which I found accidentally on the web on the... Um, I borrowed it. <laughs> Is this recorded? Anyway. What's the point of this? The point of this is, if you have a look at these charts, we've got the top 10, sorry, top 12 stores. We've got something over time. And what we've got in the two colors here is it's country or metro. Now, that's because when you went into the store and they asked what postcode you have, and you dutifully give them their postcode, I can now roll that all the way up. Okay? That's information they didn't even have. So that's the sort of stuff you can do with Power Pivot, right? You can bring other information in and combine it. Right? Now, the good thing about this is you all know that I'm politically correct, and I can do things like click on triple extra large. And if I click on triple extra large, we can see certain suburbs. <laughs> see, I, I, I haven't shown the bottom to protect the innocent, but it's something <laughs> ruined. Something, how, something town, Campbell, um, etc. Okay, sort of interesting. Um, actually, where are we? We're in Queensland, aren't we? Have I got? No, no, I won't bother. Um, so that's sort of cool. You can do the same thing with colours. Uh, you know, I buy a lot of pink stuff or purple. All right, so we do the same thing for colours. So it was quite nice. Um, they really haven't been able to do this sort of thing in the past. So you know, it was a fairly convincing demo, and we got the job. And we're doing a data warehouse, like full blown. In fact, uh, to do, we've done sales and purchases and all sorts of stuff. Purchases, eleven source tables to get the information for purchases. Right. So it's not a trivial exercise in a lot of cases to get the data clean enough to do this sort of stuff. Although this was just a, a dump. So we got the job. And they're very happy, and we're very happy, and we're having a great time because it's not a bank. Um, this is where I fend all my customers in one go. All right. I'll just do this one, I think. Oh, well done, Grant. I didn't want that one. Okay, this is the one I did want to show you. This is the one that's got all the rows in it. And I'll show you how many rows while it loads. OK, so now we've got the data in uh, a little bit cleaner. And the uh, CIO, Brendan, um, needed to go down and present at the CIO's conference. Brendan has a great skill. He's not scared at all when he presents. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> so I'm getting there. All right, so what we've got here is a few more rows. In fact, we have 
35 million rows, so that's not too bad. So I think three years of uh, every single unique transaction for all 130 stores down to the individual thing. Um, date list again, a list of products and the stores where these things took place. So if we go back in and have a look at what we built. Um, I want to show you a couple of things that's going on here. All right, and some of the techniques that I've talked about during the session. Okay, the first one is, you notice the, the, the bigger graphs are only showing three things. And the reason they're only showing three things is I've got some other sheets here with the data. So let's see how this interacts. So if I look at, for instance, um, cricket. Okay. So again, this was uh, something I introduced as this concept of product function. I've actually recently changed it to sport. And it's like the sport. So it's independent of whether it's football or shirts, or sorry, whether it's footwear or shirts, or whatever. It's just this particular sport. So this is cricket. You notice cricket is very seasonal. We've got this year compared to last year, so the users can see that straight away. This is now year, year on year in terms of the dates themselves and you know, whether we've done better or worse than, than last year. And then what we did here was I sh I'm showing just the top three of the top. Who got that in there? It's obviously meant to be top 12. I have to speak to the boys. Um, so basically, we've got the, the top stores here, and at the moment, because we've selected cricket, it's now just cricket. All right? And the way that that's happened, in fact, what I'll do is this is sort of cool. There's some people from Melbourne here? All right, okay. AFL, I think, is fairly popular in uh, Melbourne, I, I hear. Um, if I click on AFL, this is sort of interesting. And if it, I can click on other things and compare them. So I can compare just by selecting more than one. But what I want to show you there is a little bit slow each time we do that. Yeah, it is 35 million rows after all. But the other thing is under the covers what it's doing is it's actually loading up all of this data in those other spreadsheets. And right at the top here where I've hidden is actually the top three rows that's driving the graph. So your slices drive these and then they drive the graphs back on the page you're on. Now this is sort of interesting. That sort of stands out doesn't it? Who the heck is that? Darwin. Darwin, 2,900. What the heck's going on there? So what you can do is you can go in and when you slice around, there's something I prepared earlier. Hang up. Okay, go over there. 1,500. Thun Northern Territory thunder magnets and thunder balloons. Okay, so. This environment, you really can do ad hoc things, or sorry, you. The users can actually find out stuff themselves. They don't need IT uh, to do a lot of this stuff, okay? We set up the plumbing, and away they go. Nearly there. Any questions on that? So is there a... One question. Right, right. So it's a good, the question is, is there a compiling stage? In effect, yes. What happens is when you say refresh the data, it'll go out and get all those 35 million rows again. So it's the amount of time it takes to, to load that. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the next version of, of Power Pivot in Denali. It does incremental, so it doesn't have to go and get it all. But at the moment, it's a full refresh. It compresses it really well, though. Oh, very, very, very important tip. Um, if you have a key for a fact table, like the row, row ID or something, for heaven's sake, don't put it in. Don't bring it in. It's, it's not actually that useful. And because it's columnar storage, what drives the size of your cube is the number of distinct members in any column. If you bring something in that's distinct at all 35 million rows, it's huge. Literally, you can drop that one column and your, your thing which would be that big will wind up that big. Literally, it'll be 10% of the original size, okay? Free tip. That's a good one. All right. Don't want that. Don't want that. I think we're nearly there. OK, showed all that. Adding my own data. That was cool. Um, looking good. Uh, it's good having a daughter on Facebook. I think that was on Facebook within about two minutes of me trying on that awesome pair of pajamas. They were on special. Come on. Um, looking good. So the point of this is that it's Excel. I know it's Excel, but you can make things look good. In fact, a very simple way to do it 
has jumped here is you'll notice there's no lines and things on here. Um, that's because if you go into view, you've got these three things. So before you give it to your user, just turn those three things off. All right? Barely know it's Excel. So these are all examples of Power Pivot. Spend a bit of time with colors. This is a slicer at the top here, showing things over time. Um, if I find anyone in this room that puts a pie graph in a report with more than three, three segments, I kill you. <laughs> okay? Users love them, but only ever two, three, that's it. No more. You've all heard it from me. I kill you. Um, this is something that uh, a colleague of mine did. Uh, basically, what he did was took a whole lot of public, e public information uh, from Bureau of Statistics equivalent in the US and looked at um, competitiveness in different markets, you know, age groups and weather and things like that, so you can compare um, the big... Um, retailers and what areas they work in. Um, he's got a company called Pivotstream. Uh, they actually host Power Pivot in the cloud. One of the biggest things is this whole SharePoint side of things, and so they host it uh, on your behalf. And there's just some examples of reports that they've created. you notice that they create a slicer, a slicer page. Um, something really important to remember about slicers. Slicers are really cool. I've shown you that lots of times because it's actually gluing things together, and that was really difficult before slicers came along. However, every slicer goes and does an MDX statement or a DAX statement back to the database twice. The first time to get the list of values, the second time to work out what part has data in it or not, because it shows you whether there's data or not. So often you wind up with the slicers actually taking, if you have a look under the covers, taking more time than the actual data. All right? So be very careful about how many you add in this situation. And I'd love the ability to turn off that and say, look, I don't care about you showing me whether things exist or not. Just leave it as it is and don't go off to the database and, and get all the information. So that was a slicer. Uh, obviously, he was a bit confused by putting top 25. We all know it's top 12. So he fixed that for him. Um, the other thing is you actually build little applications obviously in Excel. Um, this is one they did where you punch in a postcode and some information about your clients, and you say, we're going to save you uh, $31,800 on your donuts. Um, I talked about that. Um, so when you're building these things, there's a few things to keep in mind. Um, you want to make things clear. <laughs> um, you want to pay attention to your users. Um, Try and hide your excitement at what they tell you they want. Um, I've been doing, I've been in this game a long time, probably, I don't know, 15 years or more. Um, the, <laughs> that's a great slide. You can't even read it. Excellent. I'll tell you. It says simple. All right. It's in our nature to help our clients, isn't it? We, we like to help our clients. And these tools, Power Pivot, Analysis Services, are the same. It's so easy. The user says, I've got 150 attributes in my product. Can I have them all? And you go, yes, I'm helpful. You can have them all. And literally, you do one click, and they're all in there. And then the user tries to use the system, and they, they can't, right? It's way too complex. There's too many things going on, all right? For heaven's sake, don't do that, all right? Don't. You, you, you've got to keep it simple. Keep it simple. It's probably the, if there's anything you take away from this session, that. Keep it simple. And then they'll use it, and they'll understand it. I was very excited by Keep It Simple. Okay, so we talked about slices, talked about spark lines, not things that are too big. Keep it simple, uh, showing the right data in the right way. The girl said, my user said, that's fantastic. Have you got any koalas left? And I said, I've got a couple left. Okay, who hasn't, ever got, koala? Who hasn't got koala? I think we're almost there. So let's have a look at this. Um, up the back? You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> All right. I'm actually very quickly. Um, the new version, you've got multiple relationships. You've got hierarchies, parent-child relationships. Great. Key performance, blah, blah, blah. Drill through. Yes, that's good. Uh, out of all of this, the thing that really excites me, well, to a certain extent, is using distinct count. You can do it now. It's just hard to do. There's some performance things, so it's got to go even faster. So that's all cool. Pretty soon, we're going to have a reporting competition. Who's heard of reportsurfer.com? 
View view. Okay, it's a community site I created. Basically, you can go on there. There's reporting services reports. You can run them and comment on them and things like that. And uh, we're going to run a competition soon for Power Pivot. So we are to push up Power Pivot reports. There'll be Xboxes and things given away. We're talking to Microsoft at the moment. So that's all good. That's me. Just before we do the question and answer, here's the big thing. Now, this is the reason I've got into Twittering. All right. Here we go. Everyone got their fingers crossed? I have. Uh, topics. No, what do I want? Power Pivot. Update all. Is it doing anything? I've clicked on it twice. This could be the all-time biggest flop of my career. <laughs> Create link table, don't do that. Is that what I was clicking on? No, update all. All right, who's going to help me? What's that? Yeah, that's for the... Oh, okay. Well done. <laughs> All right, I'll just show you. Damn it. Damn it. No, but of course, it's a normal demo thing every time I've clicked on that. So when you click on Update All, it's meant to go, it goes off, runs off, and gets the information. Sorry? Darren, can you help me? Darren, by the way, those who don't know Darren, he's an MVP for Melbourne. He's the guy I ring when I've got questions on some of this stuff. Sorry? Yeah. Hey, I've got to do this first. I know what, you know what it was? It's the pressure of presenting. <laughs> <laughs> no, what it was, was, um, I know I should have had AU tech head there, but you'll forgive me. Um, what it was, was I was busily trying to update it, but the data hadn't changed. So this is an application, what it does is it runs off, actually gets the tweets, and then puts it back into a probably a flat file or something somewhere, which it's done now. So now it's actually gone and got the data, so that's good. So now we have to update Power Pivot. <laughs> update. Come on. Yeah, let's see, it's commented out. I'm going to close that. Yeah, why is it playing up? It's the demo gods, yeah. Yeah, I'll show you the Power Pivot window. It's awesome. It's grayed out. <laughs> instructions tab. There's no instructions tab in Power Pivot. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, sorry. <laughs> you deserve hundreds of koalas. Come up here later. All right, yes, there is an ex. When you download this, it tells you how to use it, which you meant to read, but anyway. Um, so it's telling all this stuff. Yeah, 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 that was amazing. Instructions. Look, I'm doing it. See? Open that. Have you So while I'm doing this, any questions? I need to keep clicking on it. It's going to work eventually. I oh, know, I'm going to click on another tab. Maybe that'll work. Bastard. <laughs> I know what I'm going to do. I worked it out. I'm going to save. I'm going to close it. I'm going to leave the room, I'm going to come back in, I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to open again, and this time it'll work for sure. I'm going to go to the power pivot, update, so you can see why I'm not into this Twitter thing. <laughs> <laughs> no tables were detected. <laughs> okay, while we're in here, and you guys tell me that's meant to be AU. I'm going to change that to AU. And then I'm going to go over like that. Because, you know, somebody must have tweeted something today. No, it's running off. It's going to get some stuff. So it's looking at Power Pivot tweets. And it's found 87. 81 SQL Server. Total tweets. AU TechEd. Oh, geez, that was probably a bad idea. Whose idea? Who's told me to change it to AU? Who is that? If you've you got a koala, you have to give it back. <laughs> While we're waiting for that, um, I, it is question time. So who's got some other questions? You get koalas. This is a good part. Yes. Yeah, I struggle to get my kids to uh, smile as well. How do you get them to smile? <laughs> 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 The question was, I have trouble getting my kids smiling photos. I think they're laughing at me. 
probably after all those geocaches. Um, what it reminds me that the, the out there comment, I, I presented at the user group down in Melbourne recently and there's this guy, this little guy sitting right up the back, he's very quiet, big room, completely full. And he goes, I've just shown all the New South Wales crime data. And he says, did you have any corruption problems when you were building that cube? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to be here all day. Uh, I think that'll do. It's been a long day for everyone. I really, really appreciate you coming here. Um, I actually spend a fair bit of time preparing this sort of thing. It's actually quite a lot of effort to go through all this. It's not much effort for you guys to fill out one of the evaluations, and it's not really that much more to write awesome or, or, <laughs> or one of those things in there. So look, at least, if you could, at least write some sort of comment. We do read those, and it, it really makes our day. Uh, unless you say you hated it.